Hey everyone, Melissa here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to talk today about something that uh, is a difficult topic for me. Um, it has to do with my health and our healthcare system and COVID and lots of things. So let's go back. Um, I'm going to try to um, hold this together as easily as I can and just touch on this subject. Uh, our dog Susie passed away on May 4th. Um, I'm still having a really tough time with it. Uh, it has not been easy. And she was a Chihuahua. And for any of you who have Chihuahuas or are familiar with Chihuahuas, they typically uh, bond to one person. And that's their person and i was her person and um we were like inseparable i was with her pretty much 24 7. um she did have a uh, was diagnosed with heart failure last august so when she got that diagnosis obviously we needed to um give her medication and monitor her and be around her and make sure she was you know, happy and healthy and pain free. And, um, I took on that responsibility and, um, I, I wouldn't change anything for the world. I'm glad I did take on that responsibility. I'm glad I could be there for her, but it did take a lot out of me. And I was with her all the time, especially toward the end. I was constantly with her constantly in tune of how she was feeling, what she was doing. I was giving her medication four times a day around the clock. Um, even in the middle of the night, I would wake up and give her her medication. Um, again, so glad that I was able to do that for her. Um, and it wouldn't change it for the world. But what that did do is um, it caused us to bond. And um, for those of you out there who are not animal lovers or who have never had an animal or lost an animal and don't realize that she was part of our family. She was our little girl. And anyone out there who has negative comments, just keep them to yourself because I do read the comments and I will delete any negative comments. Um, I'm grieving. I'm going through a hard time right now. And I don't need to hear or read negative comments from anybody. Um, but I want to share this story with you because this is real. This is something that I'm going through. This is something that I'm experiencing. And some other people may not know that this is a thing. Um, but I want to talk about something called broken heart syndrome. Um, it's real. It's a thing. And I strongly believe... I am experiencing it. On the day she passed away, I started having symptoms similar to a heart attack. My chest, I had pain in the middle of my chest. Uh, my chest felt tight. I had extreme pressure, uh, sharp pain running down my left arm. I was short of breath. I had a headache. Um, I was sweating. Pretty much any heart attack symptom, I had it. And obviously, I was grieving really hard on that day. And um, at the time, I kind of just, I didn't really pay much attention to it because obviously I was focused on other things. And um, I just thought I was crying, I was grieving. I just kind of thought that was it. Um, the next day, it was still there. The next day, it was still there. It wasn't going away. It never went away. Um, I did take myself to uh, one of our hospitals here in the middle of the night because the pain was so intense. Um, my husband thought I was having a heart attack. And um, I'm one of those people that I, I don't, I try not to go to the doctor. I try not to go to the hospital unless I know there's really something wrong because I live in Canada and don't get me wrong, we have free health care and it's amazing that we have free health care. The bad part about free health care, in my opinion, 
is I don't think they take you seriously when you go in with symptoms that could be life-threatening. And I think that's because so many people abuse the system. So many people. I've been in the hospital a handful of times in the emergency room, and I've seen people who are there because they have a headache. <laughs> you have a headache. Go home. But there was a guy there who had a headache. And of course, we have free health care, so they have to treat him. So they put him in a little chair, and they gave him an ice pack, and they gave him some, you know, headache medication. And he sat there for a couple hours until he was feeling better. All of that could have been done at home. You don't have to go to the hospital for a headache. Anyway, that's a whole other rant. Um, but I feel that because people take advantage of free health care and they go in for any little thing, I have a little cut, I have a headache, I have a cough, I have a cold, I have the flu, they go in and they take up time and resources. And I think doctors and nurses are so sick and tired of people going there for no good reason that when somebody actually goes in with serious, serious symptoms and complaints, you just kind of get lumped in with everybody. And you sit there for hours and hours. And usually at the end, they don't do anything anyway but send you home. So I really do my best to avoid any hospitals or doctors whatsoever. Um, but my husband was concerned. I was starting to get a little concerned. Uh, so I did go into the emergency room hospital uh, at, I think it was like 10 o'clock at night. And I went in and I told them all my symptoms, all very similar to heart attack symptoms. And they took my temperature, they took my blood pressure, they, uh, I sat in the waiting room for a very long time, they took me in, they did an EKG, uh, which if you don't know what that is, they basically hook up all these little things all over your body and it monitors the rhythms of your heart to see if there's any abnormalities. Uh, my EKG came back normal okay, fine, it's normal. So that's good news, but I'm still having these symptoms. So explain to me why. Um, they did what they would call an exam. Uh, and basically the doctor determines, um, oh, by the way, they never took any blood. They never ran urine. Um, they didn't uh, do a COVID test. We're still in COVID here. They didn't do any of that. Uh, they just did the EKG, a little exam, which basically was him just asking questions. I think he listened to my chest, maybe with a stethoscope. Um, and then I went back to the waiting room for another hour and a half for him to determine, hang on now, I have inflammation in my chest. That was his diagnosis. So my question was, okay, why do I have inflammation in my chest? Usually, if you have inflammation, there's a reason. An infection, something, an injury. As far as I knew, I didn't have an injury of any kind. I was perfectly healthy before May 4th with absolutely no symptoms, no pain whatsoever. Now I have inflammation. So he prescribed an over-the-counter Aleve pill, which is supposed to help with inflammation. That was it. Take some Aleve and go home. That was it. And I'm like, okay, why do I have inflammation though? Like, 
Shouldn't we find out what the cause of that is? But nope, off you go. So after being there for, I think it was close to three hours, I went home. I bought some Aleve and I started taking it. And absolutely no change whatsoever. None. So I'm like, okay, fine. Well, the doctor says it's nothing. The doctor says that this isn't, you know, life threatening, that I should be okay. So I guess I'll just keep plugging along with my day and deal with the pain. At this point, the pain was consistent. It never went away. It was constantly, my chest was constantly tight. Walking up and down the stairs, I was out of breath. Grabbing the laundry basket and doing laundry, I started sweating. I had sharp pain running down my left arm. I had a headache. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't talk without having to stop and take a breath. It just wasn't getting better. And obviously, I'm still grieving through this time. I'm still having a hard time. So I'm like, okay, there's still an issue here. The Aleve isn't doing anything. I'm going to make an appointment with my family doctor. Because up until this point, my family doctor has always been really cool and really good and to the point, and he doesn't dismiss me, and we get things done. So I make an appointment with him. Just so happens that uh, luckily there was a cancellation because he's booked up and usually you have to wait over a month to get in to see him. But there was a cancellation the very next day. So I said, I will take that appointment, please. So I told my husband, I'm going to see our regular doctor tomorrow. And he was relieved because of course he was worried about me and I was kind of concerned myself. Go to my family doctor. Now, because we're still in COVID, uh, their protocol is when you get there, stay in your car and call them to say you're there for your appointments. They do a COVID screening over the phone. They tell you when you can come in and usually you go directly into a room and you wait for your doctor. So I'm a good girl and follow the rules. So I'm in my car and I now keep in mind. When I called to make the appointment, I told them on the phone because they always ask when you make an appointment, what's it regarding? And I said, I'm having chest pain and shortness of breath. And the person who booked the appointment said, okay, you're booked in. Keep that in mind. So I call and I'm like, hi, I'm here for my appointment. Oh, fantastic. We're just going to ask you some COVID screening questions. Absolutely. Now, I don't go really anywhere. Um, up until this point, my husband had been working from home. Uh, I work from home. My daughter does go to school, but she does go to a very small private school. And there has never been any issue. They have the highest protocols and procedures for COVID. All the children wear masks, all the teachers wear masks and face shields, and they do hand washing. Like, we are probably one of the lowest risk people for COVID out there, okay? So she asked me all these questions. Have you traveled outside the city? Have you blah, blah, blah? Have you been in contact with anyone? Are you waiting on results? The whole thing, right? And I said, no, 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 no. All the questions, no. And then she goes, are you experiencing uh, loss of smell or taste, headaches, shortness of breath, cough? And I said, I do have shortness of breath because of my chest pain, which is why I'm here today. And she said, oh, one moment, please, and puts me on hold. At this point, I realize she's going to tell me I can't go in, but I'm waiting because maybe I'm wrong. She comes back on the phone and says, Unfortunately, shortness of breath is a symptom of COVID. So we cannot have you in the office today. Please stay in your vehicle and we will get the doctor to phone you. 
okay, here's the thing. When I called to book the appointment, I told you I had shortness of breath. At no time did they say, oh, we can't see you. You'd think that would have been the time to tell me this, right? So at this point, I know I don't have COVID and I'm kicking myself because I'm too honest. If I had lied and just said, no, everything's good, then I could have gone in the room and been like, look, I'm having chest pain and shortness of breath. But because I'm an honest person who follows the rules, now I can't go in the clinic. Are you kidding me? Fine, I'm waiting in my vehicle. My phone rings, it's the doctor. And he's like, hey, Melissa, what's going on? So I explain the whole thing. And I'm like, look, this is what's happening. I'm in extreme pain. I'm scared. I don't know what's happening. A leave did absolutely nothing. If it was inflammation like they thought it was, why didn't the Aleve do anything? It didn't lessen at all. That tells me he was wrong with his diagnosis, right? So my family doctor says, well, unfortunately, shortness of breath is a symptom of COVID and I cannot have you in the office because we cannot risk exposure to my staff or the doctors. Really? I'm telling you it's not COVID. I'm telling you I don't go anywhere. I'm telling you we're very safe. I understand that, but we still can't risk it. You're a doctor, you're in the health field. You should have had one, if not both of your vaccines by now. And so should have all of your staff. You guys are all healthcare. You see pe people specifically come to you when they have issues they can't handle on their own, such as things that are contagious, coughs, colds, flus, infections, all of these things walk through your doors on a daily basis and you can't see me? And not only that, my health care is being delayed because you're scared of COVID. Fine, whatever. So he says, I need to go get a COVID test. Now I've had two COVID tests before this. They both came back negative, but now I get to go again. So of course, COVID testing here, it can take a while to get done. There is a drive-through, but who knows, you're waiting in line for hours, blah, 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 blah. So my doctor says, I will call the COVID testing center and I will tell them that this is an emergency and to get you in ASAP, they also have doctors there. And I will request that a doctor examine you. Okay, fine, right? Now, of course, because I'm smart and I don't trust anybody because nobody does their job right, I do lots of research and I go online and I research things. Now, I'm also smart, so I don't just read something and be like, that's it, that's it. I do a lot of research. I go through all different articles, different sources, I figure it all out. It takes me hours. So I've done a bit of research on my own, right? So anyway, I get an appointment for COVID testing. I go and get my COVID test done. I see the doctor. Again, for the third time, I tell him everything that I'm experiencing, okay? They take my temperature. They take my blood pressure. He listens to my chest. He asks me, many different questions. Um, and now I can't remember. He diagnosed me with, I can't remember what it was called. Not sure. Basically the same thing the RUH doctor said it was, which is basically the inflammation from where the muscles from my ribs join the, uh, the muscles where my breastplate is. So right in there is they determine where there's inflammation. 
And again, I'm like, but why do I have inflammation? Like, okay, isn't inflammation just another symptom? Like, so whatever, whatever. So again, he just says it'll go away on its own. Okay, sure it will. <laughs> so I'm still dealing with it, guys. It's been over four weeks. It's been four weeks yesterday. Four weeks yesterday, a month. Still, chest pain, shortness of breath, headaches, pain down my left arm, sweating. Four weeks. So all my research, I came across broken heart syndrome. Let me read to you, okay? This makes the most sense to me. Now, this article is from heart.org and it's called, Is Broken Heart Syndrome Real? So, broken heart syndrome, also called stress-induced cardiomyopathy, can strike even if you're healthy. And remember, I said I was very healthy, okay? Women are more likely than men to experience the sudden intense chest pain. The reaction to a surge of stress hormones that can be caused by an emotionally stressful event. So far, we're checking all the boxes here. Our beloved pet passed away. My pain started that day. I'm a woman. Right? Check, check. Here we go. It could be the death of a loved one or even a divorce, breakup, or physical separation, betrayal, or romantic rejection. It could even happen after a good shock, like winning the lottery. Broken heart syndrome may be misdiagnosed as a heart attack because the symptoms and test results are similar. So basically, I have all the symptoms of a heart attack without actually having a heart attack. Great. So, but unlike uh, a heart attack, there's no evidence of blocked heart arteries in broken heart syndrome. In broken heart syndrome, a part of your heart temporarily enlarges and doesn't pump well, while the rest of your heart functions normally or with even more forceful contractions. So part of your heart gets weaker, which causes the rest of your heart to work harder to make up for the weak part, which is what causes the pain. Here's the bad news, guys. Broken heart syndrome can lead to severe short-term heart muscle failure. That's right. Broken heart syndrome is a real thing. Your heart muscle is weak. When your heart muscle remains weak for a long period of time, causing the rest of your heart to work harder, that can result in your heart actually failing, which can actually result in a real heart attack. Great. Here's the good news. Broken heart syndrome is usually treatable. Most people who experience it make a full recovery within weeks and they're at low risk for it happening again. Although in rare cases, it can be fatal. Well, I'm on the fourth week and the symptoms haven't decreased. So I'm a little concerned. Now here's what to look for, signs and symptoms of it. 
The most common signs and symptoms of broken heart syndrome and angina or chest pain and shortness of breath, uh, you can experience these things even if you have no history of heart disease. I personally don't have any history of heart disease. My father died at the age of uh, 65, I believe it was, 65, 66, from heart failure. So a little concerning there. Um, arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats uh, or cardiogenic shock may also occur with broken heart syndrome. Cardiogenic shock is a condition in which a suddenly weakened heart can't pump enough blood to meet the body's needs, and it can be fatal if it isn't treated right away. Here's another concern for me. I am a overweight woman. Now, for the most part, I'm healthy, but I'm overweight by quite a bit, and that puts more strain on the heart to begin with. So that's even more concerning, right? I have a lot more body that my heart needs to pump blood to. If I was a healthy weight, maybe I wouldn't be having as much pain because my heart doesn't have to work so much. But I have a lot of negatives piling up over here. And it's very concerning that I feel like nobody in the healthcare system so far has taken me seriously. I already told my husband, if I do end up having an actual heart attack and actually end up passing away or something horrible happens, that he must sue the hospital and the doctors because I feel like I was just dismissed. These symptoms can be serious. This isn't just a cold. This isn't a cut. This is my heart. This is chest pain. Pain happens because your body is trying to get your attention and tell you something's wrong. Right? Here we go. So heart attack and broken heart syndrome, what's the difference between the two? Good question. So some signs and symptoms of broken heart syndrome differ from those of a heart attack. Okay, good. Let's go through these symptoms. In broken heart syndrome, symptoms occur suddenly after extreme emotional or physical stress. That did happen to me. It happened suddenly right after our dog passed away. That fits. Uh, here's some other differences. An EKG. That's what I had at the hospital, remember? So it the results do not look the same as an EKG results for a person having a heart attack. And my EKG results came back normal. If I was having an actual heart attack at the time that they did the EKG, you would have seen arrhythmia. You would have seen a difference in my heart function, but they didn't, okay? So that checks with broken heart syndrome, not a heart attack. Blood tests, they show no signs of heart damage. Again, no one's run a blood test on me yet, so we don't know. Uh, tests show no signs of blockages in the coronary arteries. That would be, for example, if they sent me for an angiogram to look at my arteries around my chest. Again, no one's done that test, so I don't know what the results are of that. Tests show ballooning and unusual movement of the lower left heart chamber, the left ventricle. Again, no one's done a test for that, I don't know what the results are. Re recovery time is quick. Usually within days or weeks. Okay, now remember, I'm on week four. So up till now, I have not experienced a quick recovery. I'm still struggling. So that is a little concerning for me. Um, now, it does say here the recovery time uh, for an actual heart attack can be a month or more. I'm already at a month, so not sure what to do with that, right? We're right on the edge of broken heart syndrome heart attack. We're on the edge. Um, here's some more information. So it says if the doctor thinks you have a broken heart syndrome, you may need coronary angiography and geography, sorry, 
Uh, that's the test that uses dye and special x-rays to show the insides of your arteries to see if there's any blockage, right? Haven't done that yet. Other diagnostic tests are blood tests. Haven't done it yet. Uh, EKG, they did the one, but haven't done another one since. Um, or a cardiac MRI. Haven't had that yet either. Um, so... <laughs> I'm stuck here. Now, I have experience in the funeral industry. I'm a certified funeral director and embalmer. And I can tell you, it happens more times than not, especially when someone passes away who is elderly, who has been married to their same partner for 50 plus years and one of them pass away, it's quite common for the other person to pass away shortly after. This is fact. This happens a lot. And I really do think it's because of broken heart syndrome. You're overwhelmed with grief of losing the love of your life that you have been with for years and you've done everything with and now you're alone that you are so overcome with grief that your heart is literally broken. And without getting medical intervention, your heart gives up and you pass away. Now, do I think that's my fate? No. I don't think I'm going to pass away. I don't think I'm going to, I mean, I don't think I'm having a heart attack, um, but I am concerned that the pain hasn't lessened in four weeks. And I am concerned that the longer I let this go on for without some type of treatment to support my heart, that it will weaken my heart more and more over time. I have no idea how long my grieving process is going to be. Everyone's grieves differently. Everyone's process is a different length. Some people get over it in days, weeks, months. Some people take years. Some people never get over it. So I am concerned and I am trying to reach out to healthcare professionals to help me diagnose and find a treatment that works. I just had a phone call with my doctor today uh, in regards to a different matter. And um, I, I talked to him about it again. I'm like, hey, I'm going on four weeks here. My symptoms have not decreased. I'm still having the same symptoms. I'm still in pain. I'm still having a difficult time doing yard work and housework without having to take a break, what do we do? And um, I did also talk to my naturopath because I see one of those as well about this. And she suggested that I ask my doctor to check my cardiac markers in my blood. Well, that would be a blood test, which is something that I just read is something that they do. And uh, he said that there wasn't any point in checking my cardiac markers at this point, but he did say he would run some other tests. So uh, I have paperwork here for a chest x-ray. So that's something because he actually said to me, he's like, well, I assume they did a chest x-ray when you were at the hospital. And I'm like, nope, they didn't. <laughs> so I am going to go for a chest x-ray. So hopefully I'm hoping that actually shows something because there's nothing, nothing worse than having symptoms, feeling horrible, knowing something's wrong, but all the tests come back normal. I've been here before. It sucks. So I'm really hoping something shows up on that chest x-ray. It's funny I say that because most people are like, God, I hope nothing shows up. I hope there isn't a problem. I hope there is a problem because then we know what it is and we can fix it, right? So I have a chest x-ray. Another thing he's sending me for is a treadmill test, which I'm not looking forward to, but I am looking forward to. So basically what this is, is it's basically an EKG, except 
instead of just laying on a bed and they put all these sensors on me to check my heart rhythm, they throw me on a treadmill. Then they hook me up to an EKG to see how my heart reacts in that environment. So they put me on a treadmill, I'm walking, they're gonna check the rhythm of my heart, they're going to increase the speed, they're going to increase the incline on the treadmill, they're gonna make my heart work hard. Now, I'm looking forward to that because I know for a fact when I am doing strenuous activity like yard work, like I was the other day, the pain increases and it hurts and I have to stop. So I'm really hoping by doing this treadmill test, they will see how difficult it gets for me when I'm doing strenuous activity. So fingers crossed that something comes back abnormal and we can really put some effort into figuring out what's going on because this is ridiculous. And I just wanted to do this video to share this experience with you. Um, whether you believe in broken heart syndrome or not, I really don't care because I'm experiencing it. I can't find any other explanation for my symptoms. I know it's not a heart attack because I'd be in the hospital, right? Um, so it, there's gotta be something else. All the symptoms I'm having fit with broken heart syndrome. Everything fits. So I wanted to share this with you in case you have experienced this or you know someone that is experiencing this. And I was just very upset with the lack of health care I have been given. Um, I've gone through three doctors, three of them, and no one seems to take this seriously and look into this further for me. So. Um, you know, that's the other thing. You need to be your own advocates. You know how you're feeling. And if you know something is wrong, you need to keep trying to find answers. No matter how many doctors or hospitals tell you, you're fine, nothing's wrong. If you think something's wrong, then keep looking. Go to another doctor, go to another hospital. Find someone that will listen to you and figure out what's going on and do your own research. Don't listen to what the doctor has to say and take it as 100% gold. Doctors make mistakes too. They're people, right? They're very busy, especially with all the COVID crap going on right now. Do your research. But be open-minded. Don't read something and then take that as, okay, this is it 100%. Before I came to my conclusion, I researched for days, read articles, read, you know, different board, like question boards and things like that. Other people have, who have experienced what I'm experiencing. You have to do your research. You have to be open-minded. You have to be thorough and be open to the possibility that you may not find the answer because I mean, there's so many things out there to deal with health. I don't think we know everything out there. There's, I mean, there's so many things. The body is such a complex organ, you know, there's so much going on, but if something's wrong or you think something's wrong, don't give up, keep fighting, keep looking for that answer. I'm still looking for that answer. Hopefully after these tests, we'll have a better idea of what's happening. Or I still hope that one day I'll just wake up and feel fine again and it just goes away on its own. That's a possibility too. But right now, I'm struggling guys. The pain is real, it hurts, it's scary, and I don't know what to do. So if any of you have had this happen to you before or have heard of this happening before, put your comments below. Let me know what you know about this because the more information I have, the easier it's going to be for me to figure out what's happening. So I really appreciate you watching this video with me. I probably will do an update video once these tests have been complete. Um, now again, going like this treadmill test, this actually takes place at a hospital 
and it can take like over a year for you to get in for these kinds of tests. So I'm not expecting these tests to happen right away, which again, really sucks because I'm having these symptoms now. If I don't get in for this test for a year, well, God, I'm hoping by then my symptoms are gone, right? But it would sure be nice to do this test while I'm having these symptoms to really figure out what the deal is. So fingers crossed, I can get in soon. I'll do an update video for you guys to let you know what we discovered, what our plan is, and how we're going to get through this. So again, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And we will see you next time.